Hi, everyone, and welcome. I'm Meredith Bell, and I'm here to have a virtual coffee with Johnny Carciopolo. Hi, Johnny. How are you today? I am doing great, and I've got my coffee ready, too. So I'm looking forward to talking Excellent. with you. <laughs> what I wanted to do is just jump right in and ask you to tell us, what is your business all about? Well, I am a business coach. I, I own a franchise uh, focal point coaching and training, and um, it's all about helping businesses uh, uh, produce more, uh, uh, work better with their employees or whatever it is that they're looking to do. And um, I concentrate a lot right now on helping with employees. That's the, the big push I'm doing right now. Well, I know that you spent many years in the corporate world, and I'd like to know what was it that caused you to start your own company? Well, I did. I was a th I'm a 30-year veteran of the corporate world, and I was liberated last year. And um, I took the, uh, the leap into entrepreneurship and business ownership. It's something I had thought about for a very long time. And um, I love the work that I did in the corporate world, but I realized I was affecting very small uh, amount of people. And mm -hmm. I really thought that uh, I could do a better uh, affecting more, uh, being able to affect more, more people. And small businesses is, I think, the backbone of our, of our country. And I really love the idea of myself uh, being an entrepreneur with a small business and helping other people make their businesses successful. So that was the thing that kind of sent me over the edge. Oh, I can relate to that. Um in terms of wanting to have an impact, especially with the small business owners, because I agree with you wholeheartedly about their, their whole purpose um, and how they contribute to the economy. So how would you describe uh, the why behind what you're doing? Yeah, the why, that's, that's good, because uh, I had to think long and hard about that. When I decided to make the leap, it was, okay, so what do I do now? You know, mm -hmm. I looked at a lot of different things, a lot of different types of businesses. And um, it's one of those times where you really reflect and, and uh, make some big decisions. And what I wound up with was, I've got a lot of experience and a lot that I feel like I can give to um, other entrepreneurs. So some of the businesses I was looking at didn't really uh, reflect that. So when I found the coaching world, because I wasn't even familiar with the coaching world at all, when I found that, I fell in love with it. And it really matched my background and allowed me to take my 30 years of experience and apply it to this particular uh, position to be able to help other people. So I do it because um, I have a burning desire, like really deep, uh, to see small businesses succeed. And uh, whatever I can do to help with that is, is really my, my biggest why is really just to get out there and help. That's great. And I've sensed that, you know, from our earlier conversation, too, I can just feel your commitment and your energy. So tell me a little bit about who your ideal clients are. Mm -hmm. And also, how do you help them? What is it you do? Sure. Well, um, being a new business owner, that's one of the things that uh, it's a challenge for us to go through that exercise to say, who is our best client? Who is the ideal uh, mm -hmm. type of business that we can help? And uh, after, again, several months of uh, looking and trying things out, I've really come to the conclusion now that right now, today, my perfect clients are uh, corporations or businesses with, uh, that are having challenges with productivity and um, uh, performance with employees, uh, because that's our number one resource in any business. And if we don't take care of the employees, we're not gonna take care of the customers. So my drive right now is to get out and help as many companies uh, kind of gel with their employees and make sure they're, they're uh, rewarding their high performers and keeping them and making sure they're making good hires to start with. So um, I'm kind of targeting the financial industry right now because that is really where my background is. So I know their pain points. I know the things that uh, uh, they have issues with so if, and I can talk their language. I can walk in and, and immediately um, empathize and understand where they're coming from. So I am targeting that market right now. And um, so what I do with that is I have a, a, a whole suite of assessments um, from a company that I partner with that will really kind of get in and uh, get to the heart of any issues that are existing, uh, whether it be communications, whether it be uh, relationships between employees, between 
supervisors and employees and um, and really get people all talking the same language and and help the supervisors or the managers really understand the employees better and um, work with them kind of more side by side and get them doing the things that they're good at make sure they place them in the areas where they can uh, excel and succeed and once you get that ball rolling there's a really quick turnaround on the uh, the advantages that you see uh, I see it quite yeah, tell me a little bit about those um, advantages um, when you think about the changes or improvements mm -hmm. you know how do those translate into the results that you produce for companies or that I should say you help them produce right, right. because you're not actually doing it for them you're guiding them right so um, the best way I can explain that is just to give you an example. Uh, yeah. The example would be uh, uh, one of the companies that I worked for previously. We had a pretty large uh, employee base. We had about 6,000 employees and we decided to undertake this uh, uh, program or process of improving communications. And we worked to get, uh, first of all, every employee did an assessment, a behavioral assessment, mm -hmm. which helped them understand what makes them tick, you know, why they do the things they do. Right. In turn, what it also did was it helped them understand why other people do what they do. Uh, so now it kind of takes away the uh, stigma of, well, they're just being mean, or they just, you know, are trying to give me a hard time. When you really understand why a person does what they do and how they want to be communicated with, it changes everything. So we even took it as far with all 6,000 employees uh, to identify on their badges, their behavioral style. So when you walked up to someone, you immediately knew who you were talking to, how they like to be communicated with, um, and, and how to kind of phrase or, or, or word what you're trying to say. And it really changed the landscape of how people work together with each other. So that was one part of it. The second part was then we took the managers through and said, okay, you've got this great tool. You've got all this information at your disposal. What are you going to do with it? And showed them now how to more effectively manage their employees based on how their employees like to be managed. And um, I, I guess the best reference I can use is a lot of times people talk about the golden rule. You're familiar with that, right? Oh, yeah. All right. So we know the golden rule is treat others as you would want to be treated yourself. And really, it's a new day. And um, if we do that, we're missing about 75% of the opportunities. If right. we do everyone right. the way we want to be treated, right? So the yeah. new rule that I like to introduce to people is the platinum rule, which is treat others as they want to be treated and they want to be communicated with. And the change that we saw in production, performance, output, um, the, uh, the communication skills between people were phenomenal it made such a difference so how does that affect the bottom line well if you have a, a well-oiled machine and your employees are all on the same page you have very little turnover and turnover is probably one of the biggest expenses that a company can incur and they don't even realize it because there's not a, a line on their spreadsheet that says losses for turnover mm. so when we can really affect how these people work together and uh, put people in the right place where they can excel, uh, very little turnover happens. Uh, so that's the real effect. That's where companies see it in the bottom line. I would think also you, you see more engagement, that they feel better, more respected, and are more willing to work hard to produce the results that are needed from them. Well, they feel appreciated because mm -hmm. now the manager is, is talking on their terms um, and, uh, and, and they're in positions now where they really excel because they're doing the things that they're very good at. It's, it's very minor changes that have to happen. It's not a, a hard thing at all. And um, it, once, once you see that ball rolling, what was really cool about it was we did it uh, in a structured way where it was incremental. And uh, we would do departments at a time. And when this department was done, we'd do another one. And when other departments started seeing the changes that were happening in that department, they were banging on the door saying, when do we oh, get to cool. Right? That's so, great. Yeah, so it was real. Well, go ahead. No, I was just, it was real. Uh, uh, the process was very smooth and it was very, um, uh, it just happened naturally. You know, it wasn't something we had to force down people's throats. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, that's always the most effective when it comes from them once they start seeing some positives. I can tell just watching you how excited and 
enthusiastic you are about what you're doing, mm -hmm. what would you say is the most rewarding aspect of your work? Um, really uh, seeing that uh, when people get it, when they really see the difference that happens. And, yeah. um, and here's the, the beauty of it is it doesn't only work for companies that have 6,000 employees. I've worked with companies that had five employees mm -hmm. and it works just as well for them. And um, it really, sometimes when you look at it, it may work even better because those people wear a lot of hats, right? If there's only five people, they have to be doing yes. a little bit more. So even in that situation, uh, getting people doing the things that they're very good at or that they're naturally suited for, um, they, the, the productivity goes sky high and they are just so happy to be at work every day doing what they love. And, um, and again, just small changes that have to happen. And uh, it is uh, phenomenal how the managers or the business owners react when they see it. It's like, that was so easy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's, uh, that's to, to me, that's, you know, one of the biggest things. You know, I forgot to ask you, I know you're located in Alabama. What geographic area are you interested in serving with your services? Right, uh, well, I love face-to-face. So I love, you know, obviously I'm going to uh, try and get as many uh, local businesses as possible. But the beauty of this is it is it doesn't have to be face to face. Mm -hmm. So I can help companies uh, around the country and, uh, and, you know, implement this process. And, you know, heck, I wouldn't mind going out to some of those places. If I got one in Hawaii, I'd probably have to go <laughs> bite the bullet and take the trip and go, you know, I'll be there. Yeah. But, uh, but that's, that's pretty good. You know, especially in the winter time <laughs> especially right now right now today as a matter of fact yes um, well let me just um ask you when you think about what is a favorite quote that you have that kind of inspires you mm -hmm. um do you have a favorite one i do i do and it fits in perfect with what i'm doing now um i've always liked this quote but i've never had anything to really you know tie it to and now i do and uh lee iacocca do you know who that is, right? Oh, yes. Right, right, right. So uh, he's, one of his big things that he's always said is communication is everything. And when you boil it down, it yeah. really is everything. Everything starts with that communication process. And if we communicate effectively and we uh, communicate, you know, correctly with the people that we're dealing with, it really makes all the difference in the world. So communication is everything. I put that on a little tagline on, a, on many, many things that I send out and uh, it, it really makes a huge difference. Oh, that's great. Yes. And, and it really is true. When you think about relationships, they all boil down to how well you communicate. So the work you're doing is so important. Johnny and I would love to um, have you share where people can get in touch with you for, if they'd like to know more about your programs. Sure, sure. Oh, and one other thing it, it, you just brought up about relationships is when people learn this, it doesn't just work at work. It works at home, too. Right. right. So they can use this in their personal life and it improves all the way around. So yeah, I get real uh, excited about this kind of stuff. So I would love to, uh, for people to uh, get in touch with me. They can call me here in Birmingham at 205-436-6500, or uh, you can connect with me on LinkedIn. And it's uh, Johnny, J-O-H-N-N-Y Carciopolo, C-A-R-C-I-O-P-P-O-L-O, and just send a connection request and I will connect with you and we will start talking about it and see what we can do. I would love That's it. That's great. Johnny, you are such a terrific example to me of what you're wanting to bring about in other people. You're so um, generous and sharing and interested in helping. And I think that's why we were kindred spirits mm -hmm. from the first time we spoke. So thank you so much for mm -hmm. sharing your work with us. And here's to another virtual coffee. Sometime. Right. Definitely. Thank you so much. It was okay. All right. Bye. Bye-bye.